Good morning everyone, welcome to a new episode. Today I want to talk about the only two lenses you need and why it's also a big mistake. Woo, let's go. All right guys, welcome to a new episode. Today I want to talk to you about those two babies right here why I think they're awesome and also why I think it was a mistake for me maybe to get that. So we'll, we'll dig into what is great about those lenses, what is really bad and what maybe I would change it for. Because as you guys may know, I've been on the world tour for the past year, which means I've been traveling all around the world. I've been shooting video for YouTube. I've been shooting a lot of photography, which ranged from a landscape to portrait, to street photography, to lifestyle. There was a huge range of different things I had to shoot on the road. And for that specific reason, I actually chose those lenses at the beginning. So remember throughout that whole video, um, obviously it's gonna be my own experience with those lenses and I'm sure you guys have your own experience and I would love to hear about it. So whenever I'm saying something that you can relate to, please let me know in the comments and with no further ado, guys, thank you so much. You guys started to listen to the podcast and share it a lot and wow, love the feedback. So thank you so much. If you're new to the podcast, the link is in the description. Okay, let's talk about our lenses here, two giant babies. Right here we have the beautiful 1635 2.8 from Sony. It's a G Master, a beauty. It's such a great handling, all that. I'm gonna appraise it just a little bit after and then I'll tell you what are the drawbacks about it. Here we've got a 7200, the 7200 2.8. If you're familiar with lenses and zoom lenses, you know that's like the same growl of all the lenses, in my opinion. If you had to have only one lens for the rest of your life in terms of zooms and like long focal range, that would be the guy you want. Now, as you may see, it is a fairly big and that one well 1635 so let's let's start with um i think the most interesting right now it's gonna be like why do i think those lenses are awesome here 1635 this is the focal range that you want for shooting in the street and shooting landscape because you can go from literally 16 millimeter on full frame which is super wide which puts all your landscape into your camera or you can get like super cool effects in the street, but you can also go all the way to 35 millimeter, which in my opinion is great focal length for the street. The beauty here is that we're at 2.8 and it's constant aperture, which means I can shoot 2.8. I can get kind of street portrait with it. It always looks good. It looks super sharp. That lens is like ridiculously sharp. The build quality has been amazing. You guys saw it. I took it apart, uh, weather sealed also, very nice. I've been using it, uh, I would say 85% of the time, it's always screwed on my camera. Obviously I need a 16 millimeter because I'm shooting really wide when I'm doing the video in order for you to not only see just me because that's, I mean, uh, let's be honest, it's not that the most interesting, but you can also see the sceneries around me. For me, it, I really like shooting wide. It really sucks in the viewer into a scene. So yeah, I've been using that a lot, all the time, and it is literally my baby. I, I just love, I cannot go out without that lens. So we'll talk about why I don't think it's that great, but I know, don't say it, we'll talk about it after. 7200, guys, if you listen to a podcast with Colin, you know that Colin uses a 7200 2.8 from Canon to shoot street photography everywhere. And as a, a previous couples and portraits and wedding photographer, I use that lens also a lot on the, what was it, Nikon version, but uh, they're all the same, Canon, Nikon, and Sony are just as good in terms of 7200 to 8. Those babies are just magical, whichever brand it is. This is a lens that can save you so much. First of all, it allows you to shoot from pretty far because 200 millimeter is really nice to really get in the action without having to get in the action if that makes sense for you the sharpness on that is just insane it's just so beautiful i don't know if you've ever seen photos of uh, this baby shot at 200 2.8 everything gets so blurry and beautiful in the background I just love, 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 love that lens. It has stabilization. On top of that, it's just so 
sturdy. It's super strong. It feels good in your hand when you have it. It feels like you're not gonna drop. Maybe you can you can literally defend yourself with it. It's almost like a weapon. It's just an incredible lens. Yet, yet, guys, there's always a moment as a man, as a photographer, as a woman photographer, where you're gonna be doubting yourself. Maybe you're gonna be thinking, that's not what I should have gotten. I should have gotten something else. Mm. Is it really the right choice for me right now? You know what? I had that thought during the world tour. The bad, guys, what is really bad about those lenses? Well, there's not much that is very, very bad, let's be honest. The really problematic thing with me, for example, for the 1635 was that it's not stabilized. And I know I think it would make the lens a bit bigger and all that, but when I'm shooting video, I love having dual stabilization, which is in the lens and in the camera. It makes a big difference. Just the sensor stabilizer is already amazing, but when you can have two, it means you can get a lot of walking shots that get super smooth and steady. Now, as a photographer, it's not that important. And if I'm super honest with you, that's like the least of my problems. But when you do video, it's very important. My problem one as a photographer is that the barrel comes out. Okay, so it's an extendable barrel that it comes externally, which in my opinion, causes more problem where you can have more dust going inside the lens and also it puts it as a risk when it falls like it did in the Maldives um, of like twisting the barrel breaking it. it it just I think it's a lot more fragile than having a whole uh, one piece body on the lens now I think if you have one piece it gets bigger so you obviously have a trade-off but that's that's my problem the other thing is that, well, it is big. It's not gonna be unnoticed in the street. It is big, it is heavy, 700 grams, so it's not very light. But, haha, <laughs> it is a lot lighter than that, let's be honest. Let's talk about that. This, this baby, this beauty is, um, as I mentioned, absolutely magnificent, but, 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 it is 1.5 kilo, 1.5 kilo, 3.2, Pounds. I don't know if you can imagine, this is super heavy, which means whenever you're not using it, you're carrying it. I was carrying it all the time in my backpack and sometimes I wouldn't use it for a whole day. And I felt really bad because I, I had been carrying it the whole day. I have to say in terms of quality, in terms of uh, build, in terms of anything else, I have nothing to say. It's just insane. But in terms of weight and size, that is a big problem. Now, if you're new to the world of lenses and the physics around them, for 7200 2.8, it's just physically not possible to make it shorter. So you will always have a lot of glass and it will always be very heavy. Um, so that's something you have to live with it. So if you're considering one of those lenses, please, please work out first workout because with a camera it's gonna get mm, it's gonna get good when you shoot a, a few hours with it you'll see your muscles gonna get really big just like yeah no the other thing that is problematic with that lens and as you can realize guys it is big um, it is very big so when you're carrying it in the street when you're shooting with it there is no way people cannot see you you know like you're literally it you literally have something written on your face that says i'm taking a big photo and they are most likely professional because this lens is most likely a lot more than your monthly salary for all the countries that i visited so that was a big concern for me i always try to be very discreet with it there were situations where i actually would not take it out when i didn't feel safe like in big cities with like super crowded streets and all that if you're trying to be discreet this is clearly not a lens you should get but at the same time it's just so beautiful you get such amazing photos with that so yeah, there is always a huge trade-off which brings me to the fact that you know what i might be reconsidering that setup to something different nowadays and i want to share with you that because i think that's a beauty when you're a photographer is actually you're changing your mind you're changing your style you're changing your gear so let's talk about what i would do right now if i had to start all over again so if i start all over again i know I know this guy might be out, might be out. Maybe we'll keep him. And this guy, uh, we'll see. Guys, remember travel adventure photographer here shooting portrait lifestyle, landscape and street photography, which means my needs might be different from yours, but I'm covering a wide range of things I want to shoot. Now, the biggest issue I've encountered during my world tour 
was that the moment I broke that lens and I was lucky enough that it wasn't so broken that uh, the autofocus was still working, I could still shoot. But the big problem is when you're traveling with just those two, if you break that, you're screwed. You only have, to, you can only shoot with that one after. And to be honest, those guys are very expensive. That's something I didn't list in the drawbacks, but they're very expensive. We're talking about $2,300. And I think that's $2,500 or $2,300, something like that. And that's without tax. So the cheaper your gear is, the cheaper your camera is, the less afraid you're gonna be to get into action, get into the street, like really get low to the ground, maybe dump your camera on the floor to take a speci specific shots, all that. You're never gonna be afraid because if you break a hundred dollar, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollar lens, you're gonna feel a lot less worse than if you break that baby. I can tell you it happened to me, it's not fun. So what I thought about was instead of carrying that big 7200 when I'm traveling and I've seen a friend do it, that's why I had the idea, I think I would replace that one with a beautiful 85mm 1.8. It is a cheap lens, not as fast, but it's fast enough for what it's meant to be for, which is usually portraits or shooting like landscape really zoomed in, which I really love. And with the camera I have, which is A7R3, I have a lot of megapixel, which means I can uh, always zoom in a little bit more. And on the 85 millimeter, if I don't feel like I'm close enough, I can turn on the APS-C mode, 35, super 35 millimeter, which means I'm gonna be shooting with the 85 millimeter as if it was a 110 or 120 millimeter equivalent, which is really, really, really nice. And 1.8 gets super buttery smooth. It's even better for low light and to shoot my B-rolls and to shoot people, I think it might be an even better solution. On top of that, it is very light. So that guy, I think I would get rid of it and replace it with a 85 uh, 1.8 to be honest. Yeah, that, that's the truth. But if I have my base, if I'm always somewhere, this guy is just insane. I just love it. One lens to do it all. Now the 1635, there is a scenario where I keep it because I think it's so versatile to have the 2.8 on 16 to 35. But the problem is if you break it, you're screwed. You have nothing else, okay? And I cannot shoot my videos anymore. So what I would add in my bag, because now I would have 1635-28, I would have 85-18, which is fairly light, which can go in your pocket anytime. I would add a lens, which would be either 24 or 28. So there is a 24 f 1.4 that I just tried at Photokina in Germany, the new Sony lens, and it was absolutely amazing. Beautiful lens, great setup, and that is the lens, for example, you could couple with a 1635 f4, which is stabilized and which is lighter by 200 grams. So it would be actually better in my bag. So I would have 1635 f4, whenever I need low light, I take my 24 millimeter f1.4, for example, astrophotography, perfect like that, or have a 28 millimeter f2. The reason I would have the 28 millimeter f2 would simply be to have the low light and it's also because it's a lot cheaper than the 24 millimeter 1.4. So that would be another option I could be using. Yeah, that would be, I think, the ideal setup because imagine you break the 16, 35 millimeter, you can always fall back on the 24 or the 28 millimeter. Woo! All right, I think, I think that would be a good setup. Now I wanna hear your thoughts, guys. Let me know in the comments, how would you feel? What kind of, what would be the ideal setup if you had to travel for a whole year in terms of lenses? And remember, you're carrying everything on your little back. So you want it to be as light as possible, as versatile as possible, and you wanna have spare in case you break something because the last thing you want is not to not be able to shoot because you broke something. So you always need spare. And remember something I learned ar around the world also is that Sony is not that present in many countries I traveled to, which meant if I broke it, I couldn't even buy it. It just wasn't available. But Canon and Nikon were absolutely everywhere. So another option would actually be to have a little adapter, a manual one, so that if you have to buy or borrow gear from someone else, you can find it because Canon is just available absolutely everywhere. It's gonna take a few years for Sony to penetrate and hoo-ha! All right, guys, that's about it. I really wanted to share with you that little story, how I feel about those lenses, why I love them, why I hate them, and I hope this has been helpful for you because so many of you are always asking me what kind of gear should I buy? What kind of lens should I get? And I think it's very personal. So I gave you really my background story and I gave you why I use them. 
Now, if you're new to this channel, I want to ask you, please stop what you're doing right now and hit that subscribe button, S U B S U R B E, and ring the notification bell. It's gonna be huge, stone. It's gonna be awesome, and you will be able to see all the adventures around the world. Uh, I have a trip that is starting tomorrow. We're gonna go in the mountains. We're gonna be shooting epic stuff, and I cannot wait to share that with you because I mean. Oh, my mini studio is fun, but uh, you know me, I much rather be outside. So, with that being said, guys, remember get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new, and, and, and I will see you in the next episode. See you guys. Bye.